Mr. Thorpe, please give yourself up. All the roads are blocked. We have a search team fanning out from the farm, so you can't get away. Someone go see who's reporting in. We found a fresh trail of tracks out behind the barn, but I lost some more woods. How many sets of tracks? Two, man and a woman. Go tell the search team that they're looking for Roger Thorpe and Holly Lindsay. All right. They're together. Holly Lindsay, you'll find me a forgiving man. Show yourself now, please. And I won't arrest you along with Roger Thorpe as an accessory. Oh, you're just wasting your breath. Blake, Blake, find, stay them, there. Find, them, find them both. That's my father's word. Yeah, well, maybe now this will wake you up out of your romantic delusions. The trail leads out to the river and then disappears. All right, man, come on, follow me. If Holly is with Roger. He's going to have enough sense to turn him into the police. That means he's going to be under a doctor's care by tonight. Well, I know my mother will take care of my father. But you're wrong about the rest of it. You know, it's been a long time coming, but she's finally made her choice. I hope they outrun the whole world and get away. There's the car. You take it. You go back to the farm. Tell the police that I held your gun for I don't think that's a good idea. Holly... Holly, they'll believe you. They know that Roger, I've got your gun. Roger, we wade half a mile through the river, and I'm going to jump into a car Listen and drive away? It's a responsible thing to do. Uh, to leave you here alone to freeze? No, I don't think so. Besides, we lost them. That's why we did that. Holly, listen to me. I'm grateful for you helping me, but I don't want you caught with me. I don't need an out. I don't want one. Unless you're going to give yourself up. You said you were remembering what happened that night. Do you remember who shot you? Holly... Somebody wants me dead badly. I don't think they've given up on the idea. If I tell you, it's just going to put you in danger. Then you remember who did it. You think Bridget told Ed where no, we were? No, no, I'm sure she didn't. But Eve Guthrie, I bet she did. Wait a minute. I know where we're going to spend the night. Wait, 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 wait. Ed Bowers' cabin. Come on. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Sure. Let's try the gumbo. Gumbo? These ones are oyster stew, man. All right. <laughs> you know, I really don't get why we're here. It's a little bizarre, don't you think, under the circumstances? I wanted to bring you someplace real, get you away from this romantic adventure that you've invented for your parents, Roger and Holly, outsmarting the local yokels because they dared to complain about bribery, fraud, obstruction of justice, heaven knows what else Roger's going to be charged with. And it wouldn't be very romantic. To have Holly charged as an accessory. Honey, I just wanted to bring you here because I know it means something to you. It must. I mean, this is the place where I froze my tush off proposing to you out there on that deck. I know it means something to you. It does. It reminds me of everything that we have, how real it is. I gotta tell you something, Ross. I realized something tonight. And after all these years of my mother denying it, what she feels for my father is just as real. I don't think that that's terrible, that I let that mean something to me. I think maybe it means something to me, too, but has a much different effect on me. Frankly, I'm worried about Holly's well-being. The Channel 8 News Bulletin. Prominent Springfield businessman Roger... Turn that up. ...missing for several weeks, and the subject of a widespread manhunt has been located by the police. Channel 8 reporter Dory Glasser is on the scene live at police headquarters. That's right, John, but the police are offering very few details in this case, except to say that Roger Thorpe is alive and will soon be brought into police custody. Any word on his condition? Not at this point. The police will only confirm Thorpe is suffering from a gunshot wound, but the extent of his injuries is unknown, as is the identity of the person who pulled the trigger. But we have learned something interesting about how the police were finally able to track Thorpe down after all these weeks. Apparently the call giving the police Thorpe's whereabouts was made by his ex-wife, Springfield Journal publisher Holly Lindsay. One tantalizing rumor among the press corps here at police headquarters 
is that Roger Thorpe himself is unsure of the shooter's identity and dropped out of sight on a lone quest to solve the mystery. But whether he has that information now and will come forward with it remains an open question. This has been a special Channel 8 News Bulletin. But this is okay. I mean, how is going to walk away? Police are going to go easy on her since she's the one who told them about Roger's whereabouts. I can't believe that's, a, that's how it happened. I, if my father asked my mother for help, she would not turn him in the first chance she got. Want to go to the police station? Yeah. I thought you were leaving. Mr. Thorpe, you say you could positively identify the person who shot you on the night of December 3rd. Yes, I can. You know, it's funny. You think you know people. You had a pretty good idea how far they'll go, but you can be so wrong. And sometimes it's the solid citizens you have to watch, because when you shake things up and they're protected little world, why, they get scared. When they're scared, they're dangerous, and they start to scratch and bite like the animals they are. I must say the speech is for the interrogation. Who, who are the animals, Roger? Who pulled the trigger? Hey, Detective, what about the public's right to know? Huh? I mean, the good citizens of this town deserve a straight answer, especially since the shooter is the last person in the world they would suspect. Damn you. Hey, this is not a press conference, sir. We're trying to do a job here. Come on, let's go. It's over, it's over, let's go. Over, let's go. Listen, listen, listen. Until my lawyer gets here, I'm going to have to do what they say, all right? What's that? Alexandra, no. Alexandra, I have to pick you up and carry you out of here. Please, I need you over here. Now, get tight on Roger. Stay in his eyes. What are you taking orders from her for, Tucker? She got fired weeks ago. I have been rehired. Yeah, Roger. There have been a lot of changes since you've been away. You hear me, Roger? You hear me good. You tell anyone I shot you. God help you, mortal soul. You think I don't know what you're doing, Roger? You've had this plan from the very beginning, ever since you planted my bracelet at the scene of your accident. You're going to try to frame me, aren't you? Miss Spaulding, over here. That's enough. You have enough. Miss Spaulding, why is Mr. Thorpe trying to frame you? Let's hear it, Roger. Is, it? is Alexander Spaulding the one who fired that back gun? Up, back up. This isn't a press cut. Give us a Turn that damn thing off, huh? Statement. Are these people yours? We'll get them on a leash. Otherwise, I'm going to put them behind a hole cell. All right, all right, Murray. Take it out on the street. You're making everybody nervous here. All right, all right, come on, come on. We don't need trouble. Just turn the damn thing off, all right? Why should I? He's not my boss. Okay. Yeah, but I am. The name's Spaulding. I don't believe we've met. We gave our little sunny boy a new toy, did we? Half of a television station. How about that, partner? Now all of Mindy Lewis's gentlemen callers are under one roof. Shut your mouth, Roger. He doesn't know how, Alexander. He was shot, almost killed, and still his mouth is a very slow learner. What a madhouse. Well, you can't blame them. I mean, if Dad knows who shot him, that's pretty big news. <laughs> how did Roger tell you? He was just starting to remember it was coming back to him, bits and pieces. You know, they say that that's what happens in car accidents. You, you, you don't remember the whole thing at first. It just comes back in stages. Or it never comes back at all. What's she doing here? You don't get it, do you, sweetheart? I don't want you in jail. I want you out in the open where I can contact you. Close up and first. Excuse me, people. Space, please. Excuse me. Get him out of here. Mr. Thorpe. Let's go, Egan. Come on, get him out of here. Let's get him going. All right, listen up. My, my advice to you people is that you go back to your computer terminals 
and wait until we release something over the wire. But for those of you who choose not to do that, for those of you who want to stay here and put quarters into the coffee machine until it goes dry, we'll go ahead. But until the suspect has issued a full and complete statement, until we are in the process of pursuing his alleged assailant, you're not going to get Jack. So don't ask. So much for promises, Eve. I guess we know who sent the cops to the Jessup barn. She didn't call the line, did That's what's known as a technicality. You knew by telling Ed you'd be telling the police. Look, I'm a doctor first. I was concerned for Roger's safety. Please Genuinely explain. concerned. Don't explain. What she did was right. It was ethical, and I'm damned if I'm going to stand here and listen to her apologize to you. Oh, well, you are a tribute to your profession. Is there something in the Hippocratic Oath about gloating over the result? Oh, so you think this is fun for me. The police called me down here, Holly. I'm the one who took the bullet out, you remember? I'm the one who asked to identify it. Gary, see if you can rush up that sonographer. All right, well, I told her where to be, but she's, she's taking too much time. Let me see if I can hurry up. Sure, our media vet, Mr. Thorpe. You had him out here in droves. Yeah. Well, I guess they're confused. Confused? Yeah, you know, they want a little clarification, I suppose, on why he'd go to the trouble of staging a statewide manhunt over some petty corporate maneuvering instead of trying to find the guy who tried to kill me. <laughs> well, you're a commodity, Mr. Thorpe. I mean, we knew what we were looking for with you. Now, the shooter, see, he's a mystery, he or she. But you're going to clear that up for us, aren't you, sir? You mind explaining to me exactly what I'm being charged with? Well, nobody's too good to be arrested, Mr. Thorpe, especially a man who calls his crimes a petty corporate uh, maneuvering. <laughs> Man, I didn't do anything that isn't done every day of the week in the business community. You know, that's what's wrong with this country. When bribery and fraud become standard operating procedures, something's pretty screwed up. Save it for the editorial page, okay? Anyway, I, I thought I'm supposed to be making a statement here. Sure. You want to start talking before your attorney arrives, you go ahead. I mean, you seem real anxious to tell the world who shot you, so uh, go ahead, Roger. Let it rip. How about my phone call? I was under the impression that uh, Miss Lindsay had contacted your attorney. She may very well have, but I'm still entitled to a phone call. It doesn't matter who I call. <laughs> That's right, you're entitled. Huh? Knock yourself out. Thank you. A little privacy would be appreciated. <laughs> privacy, huh? Well, see, that's another matter, sir. But that you have to ask a favor. Mother, may I? <laughs> Two minutes. No long distance calls. Why are you calling here? Well, you see, I'm allowed one phone call. I decided to make it count, and I suggest you do the same. Is that Daddy? No. Oh. I'm going to go see if I can find Nick. Vanessa, you all right? tell you? I want my grandson back. Well, you're not going to get him. Peter is our son, and he is staying put. Peter. That's a good, strong name. That's Hart's name. Did you know that? You know what? I think you have no claims on Hart as a son. You have no claims on anybody. You have no rights. Well, yeah, I guess we're just going to have to let a court of law decide all that, won't we, Vanessa? I'm warning you. You stay away from no, my boy. No, listen to me. I'm warning you. That boy is my flesh, my blood, and you're going to give him back to me or you're going to regret every single damn day for the rest of your life. You got that? 
Now, I don't have time for this. You put Billy on the line. You hear? I heard you. Billy's not here, and it wouldn't make a damn bit of difference if he were, because he would tell you exactly the same thing that he's told you before. This is not going to happen, Roger. We're not going to let you within 50 feet of our child, so you can just go to hell! Still hasn't shown. You want a cup of coffee while you wait? Billy Lewis. Billy Lewis shot me. I, I just don't buy this responsibility to the patient garbage. I mean, really, you're trying to get back at me, aren't you? I have a responsibility in his recovery. I damn well saved his life, Holly. Holly, why don't you just wake up? You know, you should be grateful that you're not. You know why you're not? Because Roger's got you right back in line. I mean, you should hear yourself. You're using his language. You're talking just like him. I mean, small provincial minds like ours just couldn't exist if we didn't have a, a glamorous person like Roger to hate, right? Well, you two have certainly patched up your differences. He's better than a guard dog. Steve. Hi. Hi. Listen, did I hear you right saying that, that you're the one that removed the bullet from Roger's shoulder? When did that happen? I, I can't talk to you about it before I talk to the police. Look, I'm sorry, Nick. Holly, were you there when she removed the bullet? Well, did anybody keep track of it? Do the police have it now? Oh, I'm sorry. I've got a headache. <sighs> Very clever of you to wait until there are at least 30 policemen in the immediate vicinity before you threaten Roger Thorpe with bodily harm. Why don't you simply throw him a handcuff and stick your arms out like this? What would you have me do? Just lie down on the middle of the floor and let Roger walk all over me? No, sir, with a man like that, you strike first or you'll get you. Fletcher, listen, I'm going to go find my notes on this story, all right? I'll see you at the office. What are you talking about, the journal? I thought you are going to be reserving this story for WSPR. No, no, Julie, she'll take care of it. Yeah, oh, well, then why don't you stay here for a few more minutes, because I think we're going to get a statement before the night is no, out. Just, call me, all right? Call me if anything breaks. All right, breaks, I'll beef you. Right? Oh, Nick, wait! Did they have a name? Dad told them? Looks like he did, yes. Daddy! Chris, huh? Chris. Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm all right. I'm doing okay. I'm still here. You okay? I am. Just waiting for leaving. Interesting way he's willing to tell all even before his attorney gets here. Yes, I don't know why he did that, but I'm sure he's up to no good. Mr. Thorpe. Dr. Guthrie says that she believes you have the bullet that, uh, on you that she took out of you. Why, well, she said that? No, I, I I, lost it. Don't you remember I told you? No, I, I don't remember you saying oh, that. Oh, you're, you're, you you're, you're mistaken. Anything. I don't know what she's talking about. Oh, come on, Thorpe. Look, do you want us to do a strip search? I've got the bullet. Let's see it. Oh, Dad, what Why do I get the feeling the moon is about to burst right out of the sky? I don't get you, Thorpe. I mean, you seem all hot to, to put the finger on somebody, and then when it comes to producing actual evidence, you go a coy on us. Well, I just prefer to wait until my lawyer's here to discuss it any further. Yeah, well, I don't want to wait. I told you before, we'll do a search if you push this thing, so I'm going to ask you one more time. Now, did you or do you have the bullet that Dr. Guthrie took out of your shoulder or not? Give it to him, Holly. Don't take 